this episode of the day and on this particular episode we are going to be talking about Joshua Solomon and a particular video um, that just came out. I saw it from my friend Carl Desmond on Facebook and he shared this particular video here and I want to just highlight the thing that he says here it's not the first time he says it there was another time he once taught these ideas of you know the Bible is not exactly the word of God the whole idea and so we're going to go into everything that he says here. But not only does he do that. So there are two things that he's going to do here. First, he's going to say that the Bible is not the word of God fully. And then he's going to go into saying that uh, he's going to go to try and correct Apostle Paul. And so those are the two things you're going to hear in this particular video that we are going to be listening to. Mr. Shari, daily Christian commentary videos. If it's the first time over here, we do daily Christian commentary videos. We focus in on what Christians believe and think about the things that they see on the daily basis. If you like those kind of things, subscribe to the channel and I will see you later on. Please do give this video a like down there. It does help it out in the algorithm. And so let's go on and listen to what Joshua Salman actually says. Now, bear in mind, a lot of people hold it in high regard. But I just want to show if your guard is down, uh, these kind of things can sneak in there. And you would think, no, he's a good man of God without thinking about what he is saying. Here's what he says here. We call this the Bible. Mm. Hallelujah. But let me tell you something. Not every word that is written here, please don't stone me. Please don't stone me yet. Not every word that is written here is called the word of God. Okay, fine. From what you just said, the Bible says all scripture is given. By the inspiration of the word of God. All. It says all. No matter what you are getting in there, it's... Okay? So it's inspired. What must be written inside there. And so... Okay. Hallelujah. In this Bible, demons spoke. Is that correct? In this Bible, Satan spoke. In this Bible, unbelievers spoke. Is that correct? Yes, Please follow it was inspired, me. right? So don't get in this Bible, Jesus himself spoke. In this Bible, false prophets spoke. Are you following me now? So when the Bible gives us the future of what he calls the word of God, the word of God is any part in this Bible that is able to give you spirit and life. So it's any part that's able to give you spirit and life. So that's his thing. So what he's saying is saying you can pick and choose. That's what he's saying. Okay. He says, the words that I speak, this is the proof that they are from me. They will give you spirit and life. So, not every word that is written here, as it were, is life-giving. Many of you want to attack me in the scripture. Okay, wait, stop. Before you rush through that one. So, which ones then? Do you see what he's doing? What he's doing is that he's opening the door for people to say, no, I reject this because this was not inspired by, by God. Like... This needs people to understand the whole aspect of the whole, the whole of the Bible, as a matter of fact. To understand that there are certain things you will see in the Bible where the Bible says those things or the Bible speaks about those things within the context of displaying for you the destructiveness as it comes to relationship with God. That is inspired by God to be written. So what he's saying is dangerous because it doesn't address that. He doesn't address what, for what are they there for. It is there to illustrate the wickedness of man's heart in contrast with the loving nature of God to bring us to relationship. If you miss that, what are you addressing? <laughs> Continue. The Bible says all scripture was inspired of the Holy Ghost and is for our profiting. Calm down. Let me explain this to you. Okay. Please so he's going to explain that. Now, note how I explained it. Né? I said there are things that are written, they inspired. So when he says uh, not everything is from God, yes, you are not, you are leaving out the inspired part. You are not addressing how is it inspired or what it means that it is inspired to be there. Jonah is there resisting God. Okay, no, that's man speaking. Yeah, but why is it there? 
He's not addressing that. Now, for those people that are just supporting, you know, you just support. It's just a element. Yeah, guys like them and them things. And so you are just supporting. No, you, you are just against. No, but you are not understanding what he's attacking. He leaves the Bible open for people to say, no, this I can reject. This is not spirit inspired. What spirit inspired? <laughs> my, my brother, the thing that's in the Bible, that we have in the Bible, God inspired it to be written so that it can display for us as a lesson. That's why you see in the book of John, in the, in the gospel according to John, it says these were not the only thing that happened, but these are written so that you might believe. So the ones that are written there, they are there so that you might believe. Joshua Solomon would have it that we should just take the Bible and put the things that are spirit. Which ones are they? Should we listen to you for which ones they are? Let me have two people, Aaron and someone, just come. Let me use you. They call two people. Hallelujah. Now, look up. I want to explain to you the difference between a true statement and a statement of truth. Are you following me now? So that we can understand the Bible and the Word of God and get blessed from it. Look at this. By his standard. Josiah is a lady. Hallelujah. Is that a true statement? That's not a true statement. Is that correct? But if Aaron tomorrow is recording all the activities that happen in Koinonia and he's writing it, he will say while Josh was speaking, he said, I follow me now. He said, Josiah is a lady. That's a statement of truth because I really said it. Mm -hmm. But is that a true statement? No. There are many statements of truth. So what the Holy... Yes, but you have noticed... He's not speaking about what it means for the Bible to have inspired for things that you don't like to be written in the Bible. When the Bible writes about all these things that you think, nah, nah, when it writes about Abraham having a, a, a one of his slaves as a thing, yeah, yeah you, you want to get around that. No, there's a reason why it's written. <laughs> you don't like it. I'm going to put your not like uh, aside. Put your not... This is the Bible. That's how God inspired it. Okay? Don't try to explain it. You see all these examples that is given. Don't try to explain it with your logical mind. Is it a true statement? Or is it a statement of truth? Now, you are saying that people should choose and pick what they don't like. The Ghost did in the Bible was to breathe upon people so that they can record the events as it happened. Whether it's life-giving or not, that the supernatural ability of the Holy Spirit came upon them so that they gave the details and the intricacies of scripture. Now it's left for the Holy Spirit to fine-tune and help you search through it. And so he just said the Holy Spirit inspired people to write it. But then earlier on he was saying contrary. He was saying, it's not the word of God. So if the Holy Spirit can't who is the Holy Spirit? <laughs> It's not the word of God, but who is the Holy Spirit? Is it diminishing the Holy Spirit? Pick out the principles of God and that part that is able to give you life. Pick. That's what he's saying. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be able to sit down and really detail everything. I'm just noting. You can think about it in your free time. People committed atrocities in scripture. Lots, lots daughters, two of them slept with their father. Hallelujah. Is that statement life-giving? No. But did it happen? Yes. There are many things that Paul said in the Bible that are wrong according to the character of God's word. <laughs> so now he's correcting Paul now. <laughs> Not only is the Bible wrong, but now Paul also is wrong. Tell us where, chef. Hallelujah. Paul was a man like every other man. This is where I'm driving to. There are many people who have taken just anything. How many of us have had that same? So you see, there are people that just take everything. So remember, he's talking about taking from the Bible. So he's saying, pick and choose what you want to take from the Bible. Really? <laughs> if it's in the Bible, I will do it. I'll never show you the scripture, but I can I can show you a place in, in the Bible where Paul permits a woman to sleep with a man. So he literally says, there is a scripture that he's not going to give us. <laughs> then he tells us what the scripture says. He says, no, the scripture is Paul, he permits a woman to sleep with a man. Uh, yes, if they are married. <laughs> what does the scripture say? So, is that wrong? 
<laughs> for a woman to sleep with <laughs> is it wrong <laughs> so what is point <laughs> so basically his whole shtick here no let's just leave it is born jesus christ i hope you know that paul was also judged and will also be judged jesus christ is the perfect theology Jesus Christ is the perfect theology. Okay, let's just Are you following me now? Whether it's Paul or Apollos or Joshua Selman or E and I, I'm saying all of us are subject to the integrity. Yes, we are, we are subject to the integrity, but the apostles, not you guys who have the title apostle. The apostles, their apostles, the twelve. They were the pillars, the foundation. When the Bible talks about the apostles being the foundation, it's not talking about more than day. Apostle, we're talking about them. They were the pillars of giving us what is foundation for the for, for, for the church. So when you are now questioning by what intentions they wrote, something is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Something is wrong. First of all, he clearly doesn't explain the intentions of why God displays. I've said what the intention of God having it there is. Is that you might see yourself, uh, you that you are not reliable as a man to carry the, the uh, uh, your hand part of the covenant. That, that can only be done by Jesus Christ. That's the intention that God is what, uh, wants us to see by the Old Testament and everything that happens in there. Whether you think evil what, he is trying to show you. His intention is to show you that you as a man are wicked displayed over here. Okay, So you have to explain it within the mindset of why is it there. Not this thing, oh, spirit, it's not spirit, it's not spirit. Because you enter into places where people must now pick and choose. Which is literally what you're trying to do. Okay, you must pick what is spirit. Pick what is... And better that the Bible is written the way it is. This Bible has out-survived you. And it will out-survive you after you have gone. Now you are correcting the Bible. And not only are you correcting the Bible, you want to correct Paul. Yeah, Paul told the woman to sleep with him. Yes. <laughs> if she's married... You can't show me any verse where Paul contradicted the Bible on the subject of when people... Yeah, he gave advice about people who might uh, be in their fasting. And he says, no, don't be denying. You must also go back after you have done so. Yes, if you mean that verse, there is the verse. There is no other secret verse. What secret verse is he talking about? The Bible is an open book. No, there is a verse, but I won't give you the verse. Why? Is this uh, occultism? Okay, by occultism, remember, occultism is secrecy, right? Yeah. Is this occultism? No, if you have a verse in the Bible, you must tell us. There's no verse that he's talking about. He's trying to make this thing sound secret. There's nothing. I can tell you all the verses where Paul talks about uh, uh, sexualism. And those are, that particular verse is one of the key ones. Within the right context, marriage. Okay? Within the right context. The verse talks about Paul. Paul says the woman must not deny, the uh, must not deny her husband, and the husband must not deny thing. He says the woman's body is not her own, the husband's body is not his own. Both are to each other. Is, is that the verse that you're talking about? Because that's the verse that's there. Why is he making it secret? <laughs> As a lot, for me, when I say some of these individuals, I don't trust with the Bible. I've never called jo Joshua Solomon a false prophet. I've always said, take what you say with a grain of salt. Because man name can be very weird sometimes. And right here you can see why. First of all, it's just dismissing. No, you pick and choose what you want in the Bible. Pick and choose. And then Paul is wrong. Where? He doesn't want to tell you the verse is secret. Me, I told you what verse I think he's talking about. Because there isn't that many verses where Paul talks about sexuality, sexuality and all that kind of stuff. Which one? Why didn't he tell you? Sexuality show. The daily Christian commentary videos. Please stop trying to poison people. <laughs> Bad things. Someone will say, no, Patrick, it's you who's poisoning people. Me, I'm here to correct what he's saying, which is wrong. All the pastors that just also try to call me, telling me, no, you know what? You must stop this... You do you approve this? You